Kevin, we're six games into this thing, so it's six down, it's six to go. Mid-season grades here. How about your surprise player on this team? Either direction, good, bad, who stands out uh, in regards to being a different player or more of an impact than you had anticipated? I'm glad I'm going first because I'm going to take the easiest one to say, and that's Denzel Burke. I don't think anybody expected him to have the role that he has this season. I, I, you know, we go into week one, no seven banks, no Cam Brown. Denzel Burke comes out, plays very well, and it wasn't just a flash in the pan. He goes through and he's doing it week in and week out. So, honestly, coming out of that freshman class, I expected Jaquelin Johnson or somebody to be the guy. Probably not Denzel Burke. So. You know, shows how, you know, how we don't know until we know. And, uh, you know, Burke did what it took to to get that starting nod in Minnesota, and he's not going to relinquish it. And he's going to be, you know, I know it's a lot to put on a first-year player, but he's going to be that guy in a couple years that we'll be talking about as the next great Ohio State corner. Yeah, and he got really helped by coming in the spring and got the advantage on J.K. Johnson and Jordan Hancock. So since uh, Kevin has taken taking the, the center square, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll go with Steel Chambers, linebacker, who was a running back in the spring and is a guy that we've talked about for a couple years now. Like, hey, will he eventually go to linebacker? And once he did, he like he he hasn't been there long, but he's been one of the best and most consistent players on defense, and he stands out when he's out there. And uh, Kerry Combs said last week he's a guy that sees it and goes. He sees and goes, and uh, some guys go and see and that that's not exactly how they want it and he's an he's an immediate kind of guy and you see him and he's one of the he's already one of the better tacklers on the team if not the best tackler at this point and he can he can get get around blocks he can knife through blocks and you just wonder what he's going to look like next year and, and the year beyond like he's a redshirt sophomore right now if you wanted to be a redshirt freshman he could still get that extra year the way he's playing though um, I don't know that he's going to need a fifth year or a sixth year or anything like that. He's just, he's been really good, really consistent and entertaining to watch. Mine, if I had to think about it, would probably be Ronnie Hickman, uh, just mm-hmm. because I was under the impression it was going to be Craig Young at that bullet and uh, mistaken impression, obviously. And it's turned out it's Ronnie Hickman. And again, that's a byproduct of us not being able to watch a lot of practice to know. Uh, behind the scenes who really was winning jobs. But Hickman has 50 tackles and two interceptions, and he has 17 more tackles than the next player on the list, and that is Taraja Mitchell, the linebacker, who's also been a pleasant surprise. Now, Ronnie Hickman has given up a couple plays uh, here and there, uh, certainly, as everybody in the secondary will and have uh, throughout the course of the season. But he's been a model of consistency, in my mind, on the whole. And he has been uh, an outstanding run support player for them. Uh, Primarily lines up at the bullet uh, safety position, but they have also put him at a deep safety at times as well uh, when they've gone to a two safety look and then put Kim Martinez at the bullet or somebody else. So um, lots of versatility there with those safeties. They cross train at every position there in the secondary. But to me, Ronnie Hickman, uh, Denzel Burke uh, and Steel Chambers. I agree with all three of those picks. Chambers, for as little as he has actually played at linebacker, is now sixth on the team in tackles with 19, and he has a sack as well. And Burke uh, is on the list as well at nine uh, with 16 tackles. Uh, he has an interception, and they don't. The stat sheet I'm looking at doesn't show. Uh, passes defense, but he's got to be the team leader in that category probably as well. So uh, to me, I think those are three outstanding choices and three reasons why this defense in the second half is going to play much better than it did in the first half because those three guys who played no football uh, prior to this season or very little are starting to get their sea legs under them and are starting to make plays as opposed to just holding spots out there. And, I mean, Hickman's going to go well over 100 tackles, it appears, if he stays healthy, which uh, is a pretty good number. So uh, I, uh, I'm i interested to see what those guys do the rest of the way. Yeah, if he goes over 100 tackles, that'll be the first time since, I think, Raekwon McMillan in 2016. And they they haven't had anybody close to 100 tackles since then. And just he I, of the three, though, if they didn't have one of them, 
who you know who is the most valuable of the three i think i'd probably go with denzel burke because i think craig young i think we all think craig young can do some of what ronnie hickman is doing but the follow-off from denzel burke to anybody else with the injuries they've had at corner and you know you've got sometimes it's seven banks out there sometimes it's cam brown then you know we saw early in the season it was legend cavazos and it was ryan watts i don't know where where the secondary would be without denzel burke right now yeah, you, you make could, you could say the same thing about linebacker too, with the departures of of Kayvon Pope and and Dallas Gantt leaving the program, and just the, just such thin numbers. And it doesn't appear that this is going to be a year for Reed Carrico, the true freshman. So you have small numbers there. So you do have uh, Taraja Mitchell, you do have uh, Tommy Eichenberg, you do have Palaie Naote, Ote. Ote, 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 Ote. Um, Steph Ote. The numbers are pretty Kevin, thin we there. Count so, on you. You, know, you, you certainly need somebody, st- you know, standing tall there. And I, I think that the emergence of Steel Chambers has been, you know, a huge step in this defensive reclamation project. Haskell Garrett obviously had that enormous 2020 season that was basically unexpected. He left uh, to go to the medical tent with some type of right leg or ankle injury against Maryland. Do we have any updates on him or any thoughts about uh, what that could be or how severe? When I saw him on the sideline after the game, he was just in a, in a slipper, no walking boot, nothing like that, no cast. And Ryan Day seemed to seem to be hopeful that, you know, the week off would have him okay, but seemed like a, some sort of a sprain which, you know, could be good, could be bad. But the fact that he was still sitting on the bench at the end of the game wasn't already, uh, you know, in, in the locker room or wasn't in a walking boot or didn't have crutches or anything like that to me is a positive sign. Yeah, I agree with uh, Tony. I think rest is probably the best thing. that I hadn't heard that he needed a surgical procedure uh, or anything like that. So rest is probably the best thing for Haskell. It sounded like it was something – that had been bothering him even before he tweaked it in that game, uh, whoever the last team they played, Maryland. So uh, I think that, uh, again, Indiana, quality, reasonably quality opponent, we think, uh, just gave Michigan State a, a pretty good game. But hopefully Ohio State, uh, in, in their mind, can get through that one without putting him in harm's way too much. You've got Talik Williams. You've got uh, Teron Vincent. You've got Jerron Cage, Mike Hall. You got some guys there who are starting to log some play counts uh, that that are making a bit of a difference and collapsing the pocket. Haskell, to me, was uh, uh, he has made a number of big plays. I think for this defense so far this season, and, you know, maybe not as many as people thought he would, but he's been a bit of a difference maker. And I think the key is certainly have him healthy and ready to go October thirty when they play Penn State. Uh, which is shaping up as a huge game uh, coming up here in a week or two. But uh, I think, uh, to my way of thinking, Haskell is a guy that uh, if you can get by this one without exerting him too much or tweaking that injury, uh, that'd be a good thing and get him ready for the stretch run when you got, you know, all these games kind of stacked up, even the Purdue game at home now looking like it's going to be a bit more of a challenge than perhaps on paper it looked like previously they've got a quarterback who can really sling it a couple of them actually. And uh, so I'm uh, I want to see, uh, you know, this defense at full strength down the stretch and he's a big part of that. 